What is up, everybody? Welcome into the VolQuest.com postgame mini podcast. Tennessee, a 33 to 14 win over Mississippi State. And this postgame mini podcast is presented by our friends over at GBO Snacks, the official licensed snack at the Tennessee Athletics. Whether you're hungry at work, on a road trip, or just seem need a little pick me up, GBO Snacks are the perfect choice to satisfy that Rocky Top craving. The Vols bars are made of toasted oats, almonds, 100% real chocolate, and just the right amount of protein to satisfy that afternoon hunger. Ideal for grab and go. Gluten-free ball cookies are a must-have for the kids while managing those sweet cravings wherever you go. So uh, every purchase as well at GBO Snacks, you're contributing to UT Athletics as proceeds from every sale go directly to support the amazing student-athletes. So order yours today. Visit GBOSnacks.com. That is GBOSnacks.com. Go Big Orange. Go GBO Snacks. Okay, so Brent Hubs, Tennessee, improves to 8-1 on the season. Tennessee improves to 5-1 and one in Southeastern Conference play, but there is a whole lot to unpack from this football game. Um, big, biggest storylines, obviously, you don't have your quarterback in the second half. Uh, Gassimore goes in, leads this team to a couple of scoring drives, and Tennessee felt like they could win this game you know, with, with Gassimore there. Nico goes to the locker room, doesn't come back out. You lost Dante Thornton, you lost Andre Carrick, you lost a couple other guys, but obviously all eyes are, you know, looking towards Nico to see about his health after this one. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to know. I mean, I, I think that everybody's just going to have to be patient with this. Josh Heupel said after the game that, you know, he expects that he's going to be ready. I think everybody assumed that would be the answer Josh Heupel would give in the post postgame. Um, I think Nico had some um, concussion-type symptoms, you know, and what that means we'll find out in the, in the coming days and, and go from there. It's not – I don't believe it's a shoulder or a wrist or an arm or anything like that. You know, typically when they describe stuff as upper body, you know, that's what you're leaning towards, right, Austin? And uh, I think that's, you know, again, the biggest thing is wait and see. See see how it is on Monday, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, there have been, you know, numerous guys that, you know, maybe got their bell rung a little bit, felt fine after the game, and then three or four days later it kicked in for them. You know, will that be the case here? Who knows? You know, I mean, I think – Right now, Tennessee obviously would love to, you know, have him back next week. I mean, it's a huge football game, and uh, you know, he, he's your he's your starting quarterback. He's your leader on offense. Um, you know, the, the guys look to just like Dylan Sampson, and Dylan Sampson's banged up, and so I mean, Tennessee's going to have to uh, wrap each other in bubble wrap the next six days, and <laughs> hopefully get as healthy as they can before they roll down to Athens. Yeah, and I mean, what a what a position you don't want to be in, right? Um, Heading into this game, this is the game that everybody circled on the calendars. Uh, when you look at the college football playoff conversation, boy, if you're eleven and one, you're sitting in great position. Whereas if you're ten and two, you gotta you know, make your best recruiting pitch. You gotta hope and a prayer. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll say the one thing, the one good thing is Dylan Sampson got banged up. But he came back in and he ran the ball in the second half and he ended up with 149 yards. So I mean, like, yeah, he's gonna fill it in the morning and probably fill it for the next five or six days. Well, we saw him after the game; he's filling it already. <laughs> but the, but the fact but the fact the <laughs> fact he came back in, you know, that's good. Like, cause I honestly, when he went down, I'm like, uh oh, yeah, like yeah. that may not be good. And then he he kind of wobbled off the field a little bit. I mean, he wasn't like wasn't normal. Now he was able to put weight on it, so I was like, okay, he can't be that bad. But you know, for them to get him back out there, I thought was big just for the for the next few weeks. Well, no doubt it's going to be big, but it's not just those two guys. I mean, where are they at the two guard positions? We saw Javante Spragans go out, came back in, then he didn't finish the game. Which I was the same way. With, I was the same way with Kentucky. You know, he he was spared really right. amply back and and, forth. and then you had Andre Carrick did not play uh, the entire second half. Yeah, and so what does that look like? Arian Carter went out at one point, banged up, came back in. I mean, this was a physical game and. You know, Tennessee has been a really fortunate football team. Yep. Been pretty healthy all year long, with the exception of Keenan Peely and that injury. Um, they're going to be bumped, a lot of bumps and bruises tomorrow. We'll see where everything is on Monday. Yeah, Dante Thornton as well, uh, kind of a late game injury there. So we'll, we'll we'll look what that is. And you brought up Keenan Peely, and I, you know, again, there's a lot to unpack. It's something you and I talked about, you know, post game. I was like, man, you walk out of the stadium and you feel like, man, that defense just not play well tonight, did not play well. You look up, they give up 14 points. They allow less than 300 yards of total offense. They were so good on third downs. Again, they are just – they are making it look so boring. That is, when you are getting gashed a little bit at times, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, what's going on? <laughs> but the point you brought up, and it's a really, really good one, it's the last two weeks, the run game, the, the rush defense has not been good. Entering last week at Kentucky, you, you, you average what, giving up – around 500 yards or total on the season. In the last two weeks, they've almost rushed 
for 500 yards, and that's that's just not good. No, I mean, it's, you know, they've got – I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's a communication issue. I don't know if that's just their eyes. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened there, but, you know, they've given up more uh, yards on the ground than you would – you would thought they would have given up. Now, Mississippi State has run the football. They've not been an outside running team. They've been a between the tackles. Which is what team. they did tonight. And they <laughs> ran between the tackles with some pretty gaping holes at times. Well, you missed Keenan Peely. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it felt like – and I didn't think against Kentucky that it was, man, man they really missed Keenan Peely. Because they really missed one bad run fit. It cost them 50 yards. So, if you yeah. take that 50 yards out – you say, well, okay, they gave up 120 yards, which is more than they normally have, but that's not a bad well, that's, day. That's office, a good day, yeah. Right? Um, or less than 120 yards, I guess, because 163, so it had been 113 yards, which is not a bad day at all. This one felt different. This felt like um, they could kind of get, you know, that they, they could get downhill, and Josh Heupel described it as getting downhill on them. And they, get, they got downhill. They brought that tight end and run a little trap block with him, and, Boy, Tennessee had a tough time with it. They just had a tough time with that play and, and with the run game between the tackles. Yeah, I mean, I think you and I could have ran through the holes that they opened A couple up. of them. You know, I mean, it was it was pretty impressive. And, I mean, I thought, you know, even in short yardage situations, Tennessee has been a really good short yardage defensive team most of the year. How many times has Tennessee stopped a fourth and one or a third mm-hmm. and one? Tonight, I thought that Mississippi State's offensive line bullied Tennessee's defensive line around a little bit, you know. And, and so, I mean, I – for my liking, again, I think this might be a good wake-up call for that group because they've been told how great they are and all that stuff all year long. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, they're going to face another good one next week down in Athens. Well, I can tell you this. The the, the defensive line coach was hoping Kentucky was the wake-up call because he was not very pleased at all with the way that that group played against yeah. Kentucky, and he'll be less pleased with the way that they played uh, tonight. And, and so, you know, you'll see. Can Tennessee get – some of that edge back in the run game or run rush defense uh, next week against Georgia because they haven't had it where they needed it the last the last two games where they were good to me is is they were terrific in the back end I, I thought Mississippi State might be able to chunk them with some plays there and I thought Tennessee's corners played well nope. I thought Boo Carter was outstanding mm-hmm. um, you know so they were they were I mean they were solid there and again you walk out together they scored 14 points I know you know like, I mean they didn't have 300 barely had 300 yards of offense right and you're like man, bad day for Tennessee it was I like I mean they've been so good at stopping the run they've been so good at limiting explosive plays that when they hit a couple of those things and some of that happens man you feel like man they're just not playing real well um and I don't think Tim Banks felt like they played very well tonight no. so um, we'll, we'll see what, what this team can – what where they can get themselves to um, heading into Athens, Georgia, with a Georgia team that everybody's trying to figure out what's going on with them offensively right now. Well, I mean, they had seven plays, Mississippi State. Mississippi State had seven plays where they rushed for over 10 yards, right? I mean, they had three plays where uh, they had over 15 yards through the air. So, I mean, not a, not a whole lot through the air, but, I mean, seven plays of 10 yards or more on the ground. I mean, that that's just too much. Um, I, you know, I, I was sitting there and I'm like, man, I really like this Van Buren Jr. kid, this Michael Van – Ben Burren Jr., uh, the, the freshman, and I, I thought he did a lot of good things, and I really did. And then at the end of the game, I look back, 10 of 26, 92 yards. Um, I know he got sacked a lot, but negative nine yards rushing. I'm like, holy crap. I thought he played pretty well, and his stats are really, really bad. Again, it's just testaments of the defense and what they've done. Dylan Sampson, granted, I don't understand why, 19 times in the first half, and, of course, he got beat up a little bit there. A career high 30 times, um, 149 yards, that's a career high. You look at the drive chart, and again, different week, rinse, repeat. Touchdown, that was great. First time you scored on the opening possession of a that's football not, game. That's not rinse or repeat. No, no, no. <laughs> that's new. First time since Kent State, but here's rinse, repeat. Fumbling at the seven-yard line. Turning it over, getting stuffed at the goal line, the, fourth the and one. run calls, were you not surprised by that, Hubbard? I mean, like, I get it. They're probably thinking, well, if we can't run from the seven. But, I mean, like, I just was surprised that with, with Peyton Lewis in at that point after the fumble. Um, and I think it was Peyton Lewis's series anyways, that they just went run, 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 run. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I think it's because, and, and Eric had these numbers in his story uh, on red zone offense, Tennessee's been really good inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. They've just kind of bullied people and run it down in there. Um, so they run it to the one. It's fourth and less than a yard. They bring in the heavy package, which has not been stopped all year. And you're like, okay, we're good. I mean, you think it's just going to be a touchdown there. And missed block. Um, you got a, 
a young back who's you know was just putting his head down trying to get trying to get there probably could have bounced it and walked in and, and yeah. didn't. Um, but I mean, I think they're just struggling to kind of figure out what they are in the red zone. I mean, look, they tried to throw it at the in the red zone deal down here uh, at the end of the half where they settled for a field goal when they got Nico plastered on that play. This is the play he got hurt on. They, they just they just don't have any real they don't have any real go tos. It feels like in the red zone. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't feel like they in the passing game in particular. They just don't have a kind of have a go-to and, play or a go-to guy in the red zone. And a guy that hadn't fed Tennessee's fans cookies all year. I mean, that just – it screams Brew McCoy, physical. Get it to your guy that moves the sticks. I mean, he was non-existent tonight. He had a couple of catches late in the football game. Why not channel in a Brew McCoy down there? I, I don't know. But, they again, they struggle with it. They turned it over on downs there at the one-yard line getting stuff. They fumbled at the seven. That's, that's what, three – Three games, three out of the last four games, Dylan Sampson's had a red zone fumble. Something is that? Sarah? I mean, that's it's it's not and for as great as he's been. That's that's kind of a trend. And he was distraught yeah. when he fumbled. I mean, yeah. He was so mad at himself. I mean, he spiked his helmet over yeah. here. Yeah. And if you look at the replay, I mean, he's he goes in there, two hands on the football. I mean, defender made a play, hat yeah. on ball, ball popped loose. Yeah, he did. I mean, and, and that was not a – there was nothing technique-wise that was yeah. wrong there. He and just, that's probably why he was so frustrated. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, I yeah. did, you know, he did everything he was supposed to do and, and just didn't finish to play with the football. And um, I'll tell you this, you're, you're not going to go win in, in Athens, Georgia. You're not going to go win against really good teams if you're just coming up empty in the red zone. I mean, you just there's just been too many – you know, that's just a down uh, – you know, it's just a – now, they had three touchdowns of over 30 yards tonight, which was terrific. But yeah. they've just got to be better in the red zone than what, the, what they've been. Now – Three for six in the red zone, yeah, no touchdowns. Little, well, the one at the end doesn't Yeah, it doesn't count. count. Doesn't I mean, count. I got you. Doesn't count that one. But, yeah, I mean, you just – too many field goals, too many – turn. I mean, you turn it over twice inside the five-yard line. Turn over on downs, turn it over with a fumble inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. That, 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 you're just not going to beat people. You're not going to beat good teams by, by coming away empty when you're down there. you got to finish those drives. I thought I, – I'm not talking any betting lines here. I thought at the end of the game, and I know him and Jeff Lovier boys, score a touchdown, okay? I mean, the eye test, when you're talking about potentially being 10-2 and, and there being a host of 10-2 and two teams, the eye test, if you're looking at ESPN's bottom ticker, you know, 41-14, to 14, oh, Tennessee did what they are supposed to do. 33-14, to 14, I get it. It's still a, a huge win, but, like, why not make it look even better? I mean, I think every little bit counts because – Awesome, ten and two. If you are ten and two, now you know you got a big game coming up this week. But if you are ten and two, there's a lot working against you. And the betting lines. There were lots of people not happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm with you. Like, I don't. I mean, does it matter? Thirty. I mean, it's not. I think if this was twenty three to thirteen, and you're making it thirty to thirteen, but like. 33, 14, 40. I mean, we are nitpicking here, but I'm just like, for, for me, my mindset's just like, I mean, do do everything you can. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, I think it's simple. You're going to go win next week. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to have some help. I mean, like, especially with, you know, today's outcome, you know, Ole Miss winning, they're all of a sudden they're back in it. You know, the only help you're going to get in terms of them losing again would be if DJ Lagway gets healthy and they somehow, you Struggle. know, find a pulse yeah. in the swamp. Yeah, and, and Ole Miss struggles on the road somehow. Um here, here's the thing, and, and, and I don't know. I, I have no idea what happens in that meeting room in Dallas when the committee gets together. But you, you, you do this every week to, 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 to get this, to, to, to get your rankings out there every week. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't somebody be looking at the score and go, well, did they get garbage points? Because to, to, to me, running one in with 30 seconds to go, that that should not give you any style point. Oh, that should I not agree. give you anything at all. To say, I one hundred percent agree. They scored forty instead of thirty three. I'm just I'm just not convinced that somebody does that on the committee chair. Well, I, you know, let's flip it to the other side. Let's say you're leading forty five nothing. You pull your defense and they score three touchdowns in the last quarter right. against your scrubs. Yeah. Does the committee know that? I mean, you would hope. I mean, you, you I would guess. hope, but I mean, it's kind of like the Oklahoma thing. No, everybody. I mean, look at Oklahoma. They they literally Jalen Smith and Elvin Spillman. Yeah, yeah. They mentioned their quarterback and 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 went to a, you know the Hawkins kid for multiple games, all because he went out there and run around against Tennessee's fifth and sixth best linebackers. So I mean, like, I'm not sure people actually really do pay attention to Eric's point. Yeah, I mean, I mean you would think you're right, but I mean, do they? I know I'm making a bigger deal out of this, and I'll, because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, sportsmanship, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, in this era, it's like. Who cares? Just do everything you can. I don't know. 
Um, I want to ask you about Gaston Moore. Of course, we know Nico left the football game. Gaston Moore comes in there, and he's got that. I think you said it. He's got that mindset where he's just like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to sling it down the field. Obviously, he's got a lot of ability with his arm. Um, but he ran the football. He, got, he led a couple of scoring drives. Uh, Tennessee's got confidence in him to lead the offense, and it was good to see him do that for a half. We'll see if he'll need to next week. Yeah, I mean, I, we'll see. Uh, I, I mean, playing at home, playing in, in, in between the hedges, two different things, uh, the noise, obviously. And then, you know, but the kid does carry for a, for a walk-on. He just carries himself with such a confidence. And he does kind of have that gunslinger mentality. He doesn't care. I do think he was funny, like, we were joking in the press box, and part of it was because, you know, Mississippi State changed how they played Tennessee when Nico was out. But, like, <laughs> they were throwing him more with Gaston Moore. There was a thread on the board that said, hey, Josh, a trainers, hey, coach, Nico's not going to play the second half. Josh, let's open it up. <laughs> I was like, and we were, Rob and I were laughing about that, but it's so true. He's coming out and they're just winging it all over the place. Well, but they, I mean, they, they threw three deep balls that they got penalty flags on. I mean, yeah. they were totally safe plays to throw. Here's what Gaston Moore did, to, from, in my opinion, tonight. He did exactly what we've talked about all offseason. When everybody was talking about backup quarterback, whatever, what do we talk about, Austin? Could Gaston Moore get, get you, you through home? the game? Yeah. And, and and that's exactly what they did in the second half. I mean, he got he he managed the game. He managed the clock. They didn't have false starts. They didn't. I mean, he had one low snap that he bobbled around and fumbled and recovered. Other than that, he really didn't have a negative play. You can't say he put the ball really in harm's way. Um, he made a really nice throw to the tight end that almost looked like a hot route against against a blitz. You know, he had another rollout throw that was a good throw to Thornton. That was called back That's on a holding back, yeah. penalty. He did exactly what you needed to do. He managed the game and got you home and got you the win. I mean, you outscored him 13-7 in the second half. He did exactly what you needed to do. Now, is he good enough to go in in four quarters in an SEC game on the road? I don't know. I mean, I don't think you leave here tonight going, hey, everything's fine, right? No, for I mean, sure. Yeah. But, but he did exactly what a, back, a veteran backup quarterback is supposed to do, manage the game and get you to the house, and he did that. I mean, we're sitting up here, and I said, "Gas and Moore in a quarterback," and I just said, "What?" I'm like, "Gas," and everybody's like, "What's going on? Where's Nico?" That was a pretty big, shocking moment uh, in this football well, I mean, game. Was a, listen, throughout the, the, the we season, get around, we yeah, joke around a lot, and you know how many times I've said that same joke this year. Here comes Gas and Moore, you know, but most of it was when Nico was you know struggling a little bit, yeah. and and so like I thought he was joking, and then he was like, "No, seriously," and I'm like. Last thing, uh, of course, we're going to have plenty of reaction. You know, tons of stuff coming up tomorrow. Rockies out where you want, all that good stuff. Max Gilbert bounced back, and that, w- that was great to see, Austin. Um, had no confidence last week. He was in his head. Uh, Josh Hopwell, I thought, said all the right things. I mean, of course, what's he going to say? You know, he said all the right things after the Kentucky game. Comes back in. Of course, he hit a career-long 51-yarder as well. Um, kind of kind of got that monkey off his back as well, kind of over 50 um, four for four, I thought that was great because, again, you're you're banged up. You're going into a challenging environment. You're going to do a massive game. You need every little advantage you can get. It's good to have your kicker back filling himself. Yeah, no doubt, especially after you called for his job last week. Um, <laughs> what did I say? I'm just joking, Gary. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe I called for his job. I don't know. Um, not really. But still, uh, you know, it, it was. I mean, like, to be able to put him out there four times, he knocks all four down. And, you know, he started those two for two, and then he kicks the 51-yarder. And I'm like, man, this is – like he just got a little bit of his mojo back. Like, take a delay game penalty and, and punt it. And, and, <laughs> and, and then he drilled it, and I'm like, well, he's feeling good. You know, and again, like kickers are like golfers. I mean, like, you know, and the, and the, and the kickers will tell you they're like, like golf. It's a lot like golf. It's a middle you, – you get mentally going one way or, you know, the other way, and it can be the difference between one and, one for six and four for four. Brent, he was he missed five of his last six, and again, a couple of those, but they were so desperate for points. They're like fifty three yarders, all that. But he missed five of his last six. Then he hit two in the span of forty six seconds. Well, and you look at the, I think it was the first one he made, which was the short kick, right, the twenty four yard kick. Yeah, it, it might have been the second one. One of those two in that span, twenty four. I mean, he jumped around like it was the biggest game winner ever. Mm-hmm. Like he was, it was like the weight of the world was lifted off Good his shoulder. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so. No, I mean, it, listen, you feel much better about him going into next week mm-hmm. now. I mean, had had he struggled tonight, you're sitting there going, what do they do? 
Yep. Josh Heupel's trying to figure out what he did. He eliminated the storyline that emerged last week that Tennessee's got problems at kicker and they're uncertain and not sure what they're going to do. It's open competition, all those types of things. I tell you the other competition that to me is no longer open. Austin talked about it. I'm going to steal your thunder here a little bit, but well, I've been calling for it. I mean, we all have. I mean, we've all felt like Boo Carter was the best punt returner on this team. L- listen, he. I know he's going to stress you sometimes. <laughs> there were a couple where you're like, "What are you doing?" But that's okay. I mean. He fields it clean. I thought the last one he should have fair caught because he didn't have – Tennessee had the lead. They were comfortable. I don't think he'd take a chance there. Fielding that went on a hop over here was a good football play. Yeah. Um, but he got north and south. He's aggressive. He's got swagger about him, AP. And he had a pick tonight too. Yeah, he's playing really well. He is really playing well. He, he you know, I said a a, better. Going, going to halftime on the turn to AP, I said Tennessee just stole, you know, those three points there for that thanks to Boot Carter turn. You know, it was also Jeff Levy helping him out. That's, but, that's but, what I said. No, thanks to Jeff Levy calling all those timeouts, yeah. trying to be trying to be the yeah. you know, hype along the other side and be aggressive. But I mean, it worked out well because he kept on calling those timeouts. They incomplete pass, incomplete pass, rush out of bounds, punt, boo returns to twenty three yards yeah. to midfield. I mean, th- there you go. Right. And um, I thought that was a big moment. And little did we know then we had never seen Nico the rest of the game. <laughs> no, we had no idea at that point. Yeah. Um, Obviously, a lot to unpack in this one. But the most important thing is Tennessee is a winner, 33-14. to 14. Tennessee does exactly what it's supposed to do. It wasn't flashy at times, uh, but Tennessee does win and uh, setting up for a monster showdown next week in Athens, Georgia. Anybody's job you want to call for tonight? <laughs> is, is, <laughs> no, I'm good. Joe for next week? Uh, uh, you know, since the team obviously listens to this, uh, let's go defensive line. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, that is ridiculous out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we got plenty more over at VolQuest.com. Appreciate you guys for tuning in as always, and a big thank you to GBO Snacks for being a proud sponsor of this podcast. Every purchase of GBO Snacks, you're contributing to UT Athletics as proceeds from every sales go directly to the Vol student athletes. Order yours today. Visit GBOSnacks.com. That is GBOSnacks.com. For Brent Hubs, Austin Price, I'm Eric Gain, Tennessee, a 33-14 winner over Mississippi State. <laughs>